charge of the action, Jay Nady. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the legendary Las Vegas Hilton, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black, trimmed with silver, and weighing in at 122 pounds. His professional record, 17 victories with seven KOs, only one loss in his career. He comes to us from Juarez, Mexico. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the challenger, El Ranchero Juan Carlos Ramirez. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, weighing 121 and one half pounds. His record, a perfect 32 and 0. 26 knockouts in his 32 victories. De Tijuana, Mexico, Thomas y Caballeros, the reigning and defending WBC Super Bantamweight Champion of the World, the undefeated El Terrible Eric Obey my commands. Touch gloves. Let's go to work. Let's go to work indeed. Eric Morales has gone to work 32 times as a pro and won every single time out. And he's done it mostly in very quick fashion. So the early rounds dangerous, certainly to his opponent, the challenger, Ranchero Ramirez. Yeah, 17 KOs in the first three for Eric Morales. He's working on a seven-fight KO streak. He is a very fast starter. He says in the ring, I'm a classy boxer, I'm a complete fighter. I can fight inside, but prefer to use my legs and lateral movement. His best punch, he says, is the right cross. There's a look at Juan Carlos Ramirez. He says, I'm more mature now. He says, I'm intelligent in the ring. His best punch is a straight right, naturally right-handed. Juan Carlos Ramirez. Ramirez, 17 and 1 with seven KOs. Not a power hitter prefers to go the distance with his opponents. Only but seven. I've seen him in the past, and he always makes for exciting fights. Only seven KOs among his wins. He would like to box effectively against Morales, especially early in this bout. Now, we mentioned he was a replacement for Wayne McCulloch, came in 18 days ago, got the notice. But most people believe that he is at least as good and very possibly a better challenger than McCullough would have been. He, he was in the ring less than a year ago with Lucita Espinosa, one of the other champions in this weight division, and ended up losing the fight when there was a cut that developed over Espinosa's eye, and they had to go to the scorecards in the 11th round, and he only lost to Espinosa. Two judges had it 106-104, and another judge had it 105-104 for Espinosa, and the general consensus was that Ramirez was coming out in that fight. So he is a very, very legitimate challenger to Morales' throw. Well, he said he started too slow in that fight with Espinosa and promises to start faster tonight. He says Espinosa had a good third round. He stunned me, but he says, I was coming on. I was trying to gain the favor of the judges toward the end of the fight. He faded in the middle rounds, and it gave me an opportunity to, to really blast on Espinosa. Espinosa, champion, by the way, at 126 pounds, so... He is coming down four pounds in weight to challenge Morales. Oh, what a good body shot from, from Morales. Morales has to be careful when Ranchero comes in, because Ranchero comes in with his head first. Wow. Good wow. Head from Morales. You don't want to stand in front of Eric Morales and take those kind of shots. He has devastating power. Look at how fast he is with his punches. And his hands always go back there around his face. Eric Morales is very good. Comes from good stock, too. His father, Jose, yeah, yeah. was a bantamweight back in the 60s. Fought Orlando Conosales in the 70s. Ramirez getting backed up against the ropes, always dangerous against Morales. It looked like Morales trying to finish this fight pretty early. He's reaching in on a couple of shots. He missed him by a little bit, but, you know. 
He's vulnerable to get hit by a headbutt if he continues doing something like that. Well, he's trying to burn timing, he says. Morales says, now as a champion, I'm more confident, but I just want to settle down into these fights and learn the timing when the perfect time to knock my opponent appears. I want to be able to capitalize on it. Well, a big first round for Eric Morales, but he's accustomed to that. And that one passes into the night. Follow Eric back into his corner. Looks on. Go ahead and keep repeating the right hand. Close your, your defense a little bit more. He's dropping his right hand. So, so when, when you throw that right hand, continue throwing your right hand. Throw a couple of times. Now, Nachero's uh, corner, they're trying him to work through the body. They're trying him that that little cut is it's not much. You don't have much. There is Wayne McCullough, who was to be the challenger but suffered an injury. And uh, he's also a Las Vegas resident, by the way. So he's here looking in on the fight. Perhaps somewhere down the road, he may still yet uh, fight one of these men for the championship, but it will not be tonight. And the champion's corner, they're trying him to continue throwing the right hand. Throw it several times. He's already having, he already has a little cut, or he's already getting uh, swollen from the eye. Yeah, yeah, he's one of the few fighters that has equal power. They're, they're talking about hit. the right hand, but he also has a good left hook. Now watch out. Look how Ramirez Stop. ducks Stop. his head down. In the amateurs, right. it's against the rules to put your head in front of your gloves. I wish they had that rule in the pros. Yeah, it creates a lot of cuts. We're in the right. round two. This one's scheduled for 12 for the championship. Oh, wow. Eric Morales, the champion in the white trunks. Ranchero Ramirez in the dark. Morales had a superb first round landing, 28 punches, only four by Ramirez, and now we just hurt Ramirez. And when he gets you hurt, you're in trouble. Right, but he has to be careful with that head because he continues crashing into the head. And then Jay Nady points that out to them. Ramirez is really coming in with that head first. Yeah, you got to watch out for that. You got to go to the uppercuts. Whenever somebody leans over like that, they're not looking at you. They're not looking at your eyes. You got to bring the uppercuts so they stand up. wants to fight a couple of more fights at this weight division at Super Bantam, then possibly move up. And right now, he's worried about taking care of Ranchero Ramirez. Talk about him fighting Marco Antonio Barrera, the WBO champion. Mm -hmm. Stop. Says to be the best in Mexico, you have to beat the best. He wants to fight them all. You know, he, he has so much pressure of the, you know, the people to, uh, wanting him to be the next Sunio Cesar Chavez. I tell the people, you know what, he's already a superstar. He, he's up there, he's found the best. So why put more pressure on the fighters? But he seems to handle the pressure well. Yeah, Good combination. Right. A little wobble from Ramirez. Big uppercut. Now go right. No one in this weight division, I don't believe, hits with the authority of Eric Morales. And you see evidence there. Angel Chacon, when he fought him last time, had never been knocked out, and Morales destroyed him in two rounds. Here's oh, Ramirez, oh, solid, right. who managed to live through all those rounds with Espinosa, a champion at a higher weight division. He's getting hurt by Morales. Yeah, he's got, Morales has flyweight speed with heavyweight power. And he's an excellent fighter. He's smart. He knows when to throw a, a hard punch. He doesn't waste punches that much. And probably better defense than we're used to seeing from sluggers. Right. Under a half minute left to go here in round two, and it's been a superb performance so far for Eric Morales against the very willing Ranchero Ramirez. He's throwing lots of punches, just not landing many. Willing, and he knew what to expect. He's seen Eric Morales in the past. He's always boxing and moving, he says. He's a very good fighter. His fight plan was... No, he got oh, wobbled. Right. And, that right. and he went down. Struggle. He did the right thing. He did the right thing. He felt Two. that he was hurt, so he put a knee Four. down. Four. Five to go. Cinco. Six. So Seven. at the end of this round... Ocho. Okay. Ramirez goes down. Box. The round will end mercifully for him, but how much longer he can go on remains to be seen. Let's go into his corner. Hey, my job is one of the time to breathe. Breathe. They're asking him to bring all the, the whole bucket, the sponges and all, because they let the bitch down. Oh, 
Toma la planchita. Está bien, respira, 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 tranquilo. Continue, continue, breathe, 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 relax, relax. No te relax. escuches cuando salga. No te escuches. Eh, Ranger, estoy dando un paso lateral con un ojo. Es un ojo. When he's throwing, when he when he throws that that side step with that, that right uppercut, you know, put the put the elbow up and block. There was an overhand right by Morales, and the Here's knockdown from Morales kind of ducked under the punch. Well, that was Morales a little after I think yeah. he'd already done, he'd already done the damage because his leg wobbled. He'd already done the deed. Well, we're headed into round three. How much longer Rancho Ramirez will take the punches from Eric Morales remains to be seen. Morales has landed 53 punches. Whoa. Two rounds. Nice right hand by Ramirez, though. And a good left hook from Ramirez. Ramirez has some good tools. He's very aggressive in the ring. Hard to catch him at the end of your shot. But you got to watch out because you'll catch him coming in. And I think Morales right is right more uh, worried about the head butts. Because he's coming in with his head first. Sure, sure he is. Very worrisome. That's why you got to use the uppercuts like he's trying to do. Right. You see his hands up around his face. Oh, yeah. Got to protect your face. This is Eric Morales' version of the rope dope as he lays there and lets Ranchero Ramirez punch and looks for a, a counter shot. Oh, that was beautiful. Look at how well schooled, calm, patient, poised Eric Morales is. And you know what he knows? He knows that this weight division, and maybe the one above him, if he hits you with a good punch, you're gone. I don't care who you are, you're gone. He has extreme power in his hands. Yeah, that's the confidence that he has now as a champion. And he's not left hook. You can't get complacent out there. One Carlos landing a good left hook. There's another drop. Another right. Those are such short, compact punches. They don't look devastating, but they are. This one will not go much longer, I don't think. No, it won't. It looks like his legs are going to still yeah. wobbling a little bit. Morales really needs to pour it on here, and he will. Yeah, he, got, he, got, he goes on terrible hurt. But one thing that I'm seeing is I'm not seeing no body shots from uh, Morales, something that kind of amazes me, because, you know, he's normally do that throwing body shots too. Well, he is raking Ranchero Ramirez over. Oh, there it is. Fake, a fake right to the body with an overhand right. So much success going to the head. He's out. Why he's the body. He's a, he's, it's a matter of time. The second knockdown in this round. There is no three knockdown rule. However, I think if there is another knockdown, this fight will be stopped. Eric Morales showing you the power that has made him such a devastating force in this way. There's a flavor of punches that, that he's known for when he has somebody hurt. He got Ranchero hurt. Ranchero Ramirez being hurt in a way he has never been hurt in his career before. Lucita Espinosa could not do it. The 126 pound champion, heavier, a big hitter, could not take him out. Couldn't even come close to taking him out. Here is Eric Morales just whacking him around the ring. And just how good Eric Morales is. You know, a lot of questions had come about with Morales because he's so young. And he was able to survive the round, but Ranchero is cut from the left highly. So he gets through the third round, but how much longer will he survive? Bad cut. Bad cut on the left eye. In a bad place. La plancha, la plancha. Right on the la plancha. We're asking him for the little, for the little middle plate they use to try to draw the blood from swelling up right there. In swell. In swell. They put that in ice so that it's cold when you put it on. It's swelling. So to draw that swelling out. We're asking him how is he? Here's, well, here's the shot. Knockdown. Look at these punches from Morales. Walking into them is Ramirez, obliged to take the shots. And when you have a fighter running at you like Ramirez is doing. Stand back and let him have it. Eric Morales does. Ramirez doing anything he can to keep from getting hit. Trying to protect his chin, but he can't protect it there. <laughs> what do you do? Yeah, he looked at his help. corner as if he to say, it, help. Somebody help me. He said, hey, I'm doing the best yeah. I can. This guy's unbelievable. We head into round four. Eric Morales, the undefeated champion in the white. Ranchero Ramirez, 17-1, the able challenger though you'd never know it from what's what, from what's happened tonight in trouble as we head into the fourth round but that's what the what this phenom is called eric morales he's so much better than the other 
fighters out there. And you can tell that uh, Tim is going to have problems with that left fight because it's already starting to swell. Yes. Most people believe he is the best at 122 pounds. We saw Nestor Garza defend his WBA title uh, just a moment ago. Oh, 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 the oh, Barrero oh. man he might face by on a bunga in the weight division. But right now, Eric Morales is the man in this weight division. I'm showing you why. And just having his way with Ramirez. You know what's interesting? Look at him from the outside. If he wanted to, he could be a very effective boxer from the outside. Oh, yeah. He He's doing what he, what he, what he, what his father has taught him. You know, when you have somebody hurt, don't go in there right away and try to knock him out because you may get hurt yourself. So he's doing a good job. This kid that, that grew up around the ring. He was into boxing at five years old. By age 12, he began sparring with Mexico's toughest fighters. Both with Miguel Angel Gonzalez, Lupe Pintor. He had 181 wins as an amateur before turning professional. That's why he looks more poised than most fighters with only 32 bouts. And Ramirez is hurt in the corner again. Halfway through this round, again, Morales got to him. How Ramirez got through the third round, I don't know. And let's give Ranchero yeah. really credit for toughness because some fighters would have quit at that point. Many fighters. He is very tough. That's how oh, he, he got caught with a good right uppercut again. Nice hook oh. and a right hand by Ramirez. Yeah. Ramirez fighting back. You thought it was going to be over in the third oh. round. I think everyone was a little surprised that, that he, he was getting connected right there. But the more that Ramirez opens up, of course, the more he makes leaves himself vulnerable. But right now, he's the one doing the punching and the landing. Morales against the ropes where he's done well, but this time some punches getting through for Ramirez. He's really got Morales frozen. You know, when you knock your opponent out, he doesn't go down, he just freezes. He doesn't move. There he seems to come out of it. Morales appearing momentarily in his stern. Hey, I haven't seen many things in boxing in the last few years as amazing as this turnaround in round four. Rancho Ramirez looked totally out of it. He's had himself a pretty good fourth round. And this is a guy that 18 days ago found out about this fight. Look at the body work by Ramirez. Yeah. This guy is not quitting by a long shot. So let's not count him out as we head to round five. Let's listen in. Some blood from the nose of Morales. They're telling him to breathe into the mouth. They're telling Morales to raise his head that way. Uh, Eddie, uh, Diaz could work on the nose. Try to stop the bleeding from the nose. Breathe through the mouth. They're telling him with, with the quickness, try not, not only work on the head, but work to the body. Anna. Well, we thought it was going to be over back in that third, but here they are in the fourth. Juan Carlos Ramirez. Keeping the pressure on and landing good, effective combinations. He backed Morales to the corners and scored with uppercuts like this. Right on the nose, that's what caused the bleeding from the nose. All done from that man, Juan Carlos Ramirez. Felipe De La Torre in his corner, Sergio Cardenas, Victor Rivera. Well, the closest round was the last round because Ramirez landed 12 shots. Morales landed 17, but uh, some of those shots Ramirez landed were big shots. This is just what Ramirez oh, needed. Oh, oh right. big right hand. Ramirez needed some confidence after being down on the canvas in that third. He needed something that would put him back in the fight. Ramirez down twice in the third round, came back and performed very, very well in the fourth round. See now if he can sustain this action. Of course, we talked at the beginning about the fact that Ramirez is used to going along this right. this fight, and Morales has not often done that. So if Ramirez can take this into the later rounds, can he make something happen against Eric Morales? And with all those bombs that he's throwing, he, he's showing good condition, but we have to, like I said, we do have to see if Morales can handle it in the later rounds. Well, in championship boxing, as you know, yeah. The fight doesn't start until after three. Right. But these two had a had started from the beginning. Very, right? very good first and a good second. And a good third, fourth. It, ha it hasn't been a fight where they've been taking their time or no. taking any many breaks or anything like that. Don't feel them out in this one. 
Left hook, and that may have stunned Ramirez momentarily. But boy, he keeps coming. Oh, nice oh, body wow, wow. So Ramirez, give him all the credit on this planet. This guy was elbowed out of this fight in the wow. third round, and he is coming forward and being effective against Morales. I guess his adrenaline is so high now that he's not feeling the punches that much anymore. Because he's still getting hit with some counter no. punches as he comes in. And Morales does not hit like a little boy. No, he does not. <laughs> Nice right hand by Ramirez drives Eric Morales against the ropes. Oh. You get the feeling that Ranchero Ramirez is starting to really warm to the task here. You know, right now I'm, I'm noticing that that they're not using Mexican gloves; they're using Japanese gloves, and I'm and I kind of over here sometimes that uh, that the padding is a little more bigger on the Japanese gloves than there is on the Mexican gloves. Could that be a factor for this fight? Well, everything, everything is a factor for every fight. Big uppercut by Morales. Very you know, I saw Morales. Into consideration. I saw Morales' fight against John Lowy, and uh, I broadcast that fight down in Tijuana, his first defense. And he had some lapses in that fight, much as this one then came back to, to beat Lowy, although Lowy had a very awkward and weird style. Right now, Ranchero Romero is getting the job done. But Al, he was so focused to fighting Wayne McCulloch, he was so disappointed when the fight fell out, he may have, because of that, been a little bit, bit confused in this fight because of the falling out of Wayne McCulloch. Well, we'll see if that's a big impact. Well, we want to remind you that Je that man, Johnny Tapio, will be act in action on the next top-ranked pay-per-view car. That one will be on June 26. Johnny Tapia will be in uh, against the uh, fighting for his WBA bantamweight title uh, against number two contender Paulie Ayala, who's a terrific fighter. Also, WC lightweight champ Stevie Johnson against Aldo Rios, the Mexican superstar. Yuri Boy Campos will also be on the card. King of the Four Rounders, Butterbean, will be battling. Uh, and Mia St. John will again be involved. Johnny Tapia headlining on June 26th, the next top-ranked pay-per-view card. Johnny, one of the most exciting and fun fighters in the world to watch. Oh, yeah. oh, he is great to watch. He's so active in the ring. Like Paez, he is, every minute, he got something going on. That's for sure. Johnny Tapia. Great to watch. Well, this fight has turned into quite an interesting affair. It was dominated early by Eric Morales. He had Ranchero Ramirez down twice in the third round, but starting with the fourth and continue on to some degree in the fifth, Ramirez has come back. Yeah, uh, Morales, he knew that it was going to be, he knew it was going to be in there for, for a pretty tough fight because he knew that uh, Ranchero Ramirez wasn't one of those pushovers. Walker type of fights. The last time, oh my, look at Ramirez come forward. The last time Morales was forced to go six rounds was against Remigio Molina in Mexico. And that was, uh, he knocked him out in six rounds. That was in April of last year. Good right hand by Morales. And another right hand. And he got him, it looked like he buckled his knees a little bit there. Wow. You know, confidence does a, so much good to any fighter. Morales has found a home for that right hand. And Nacero doesn't take a, uh, take a step back. He's always going forward. Yeah. If he takes a step back, it's because he's been pushed with a punch to go back. Yeah, that's the way he fights. I've seen him on several occasions, and he always makes exciting fights because he gets in there and he throws his punches and he's not afraid to get hit. Not afraid to take two to get one of his own in. And he continues throwing punches. Juan Carlos Ramirez. Ramirez turned pro at the age of 18 back in November of 1995. Good uppercut by, by Molin. Coming forward is Ramirez, but some good counter punches by Morales, but he is landing more than his share. Although all in all, round six has been a good round for Eric Morales. Oh, straight right to the body. Look like I heard it on Chelo right there. Yeah, well, Eric has really used some good power this round. And look to that sound fast, so quick. And I believe that was the first punch I've seen that was really connected real good by 
by Eric Morales to the body. Boy, the right hands that Morales are landing, good, straight, powerful right hands. And Ramirez, while they're landing, he's shaking them off. But certainly a big round for Morales. He has kind of gained control of this fight again here in the sixth round. Yeah, with his leg movement, he's been able to gain control. Been able to score. He's got Ramirez following him, walking into every shot that he, that he throws. That's why they say he is so poised for a young man with only 32 pro fights, Eric Morales. It seems like in the corner they might have told Morales to talk to the body. He's been connecting certain, a lot of good punches to Ramirez, but it doesn't seem to be doing much effect. Give me some water. Put some water on his head. Trying to shower him, shower him on the, with the water on top of his head to cool him off a little bit. Well, Morales had been able in that last round to move forward, move backward, move to the side. Here he is putting pressure on Ramirez. Ramirez back to the ropes, has to fight off. Oh, good battle. Both fighters, a lot of heart. El Ranchero, Juan Carlos Ramirez fighting off the ropes. And Eric Morales scoring, he did a lot of scoring in with his legs in that round. He maneuvered around that man, Ramirez. We head into the seventh round. It is scheduled for 12. Our main event, the WBC Super Bantamweight Championship of Eric Morales and the White on the line against Ranchero Ramirez. Ramirez in the last round, interestingly, or Ramirez in general, 0 for 9 in jabs through the first six rounds, so that's astonishing. Just not landing jabs, period. And Morales has an edge in punches landed. Are you ready for this? He's landed 144 punches, Morales, to only 45 by Ramirez, which is astonishing. And yet, Ramirez has shown signs of being in this fight. And look at that jab from Morales. Two or three good stick jabs to land right in the nose of Ranchero Ramirez. And with all that, with the extra punches landed by Morales, the two knockdowns in round three, who's the guy that's coming forward? It's Ramirez. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. He is tough. Juan Carlos Ramirez. I always admired those kind of fighters. The Mexican fighters who come in with no fanfare. They know they're coming in the, the other man's hometown or the other man's atmosphere. You know, it's a, that uh, Eric Morales is from Tijuana, but it's, you know, they always come in to the other, the opponent's atmosphere, and they put up a good fight. Sometimes they win, sometimes they don't, but, you know, they, they, they are tough. Those kind of fighters are great. Well, Ramirez. Great respect for fighters like Ramirez. He proved that after the third round, many fighters would not have come out right. for the fourth sure. or gotten up from the second knockdown. Exactly. And even though he's getting connected while he's walking in, he still continues to go forward. Still walking in. And he's still a danger, a threat in there. Oh, yeah. The yeah, jab the jab. Good, good. And a good right hand. But after three jabs, he timed it, as you said, and got that right hand in, did uh -huh. Ramirez. Also, Ramirez is a rhythm fighter. He's a guy that needs to get into the rhythm of the fight right. to make it work. And that's what he's basically done as this fight has gone on. He did against Espinosa. And they've done a real good job on that cut because obviously it's not, it's not bleeding. See what else Ranchero Ramirez is. He's a good body puncher. It's a lot of leverage into yeah. his blow. Under a half minute left oh. to go here in round seven and he bounced the left hook off Eric Morales's face. Well, Eric Morales is winning this fight, make no mistake about it, but Ranchero Ramirez has had his moments. Yes. I don't think Morales thought it was going to be such a hard fight. Eric it, Morales now boxing. Oh, he just got, he just got caught with the right hand. Oh, boy, look at how loose Morales is. Break. Well, if you thought Eric yeah. Morales was just a guy that would stand oh, in front of you and bang, you're finding out in, in this round, the last couple rounds, he can box He's too. Very versatile <laughs> fighter. Yep. A lot of ability. But that's the corner of Ramirez. Juan Carlos. They're telling Ranchero to work hard, to work, to throw hard punches, work to the body. 
Ahora peleaste más inteligente, sigue Now peleando inteligente. A little more intelligent. Cuando lo tengas a las costillas, a las costillas, Reyes. When you got him near, near to the ribs, mano, continue mano, working the ribs. Y empieza a mover las piernas. Uh, Morales, uh, according to the time, uh, move his legs, move around. Get your distance. Not to take a gamble. You, you got the fight, so continue working until your distance. Work the body. You're, you're, you're getting him tired if you continue working to the body. The left jab is so important, and Morales knows that, but you can't be dragging that left jab back down. You got to keep it up by your head, or you get tagged. Morales got tagged from Ramirez with an overhand right. That will make your opponent cease throwing that jab if you continue hitting him with the right hand over the top. We head into round eight in our championship matchup. Eric Morales in the white trunks, the WBC Super Bantamweight champion, and his challenger, Ranchero Ramirez. They wait for some of the water up in the corner of Morales. We're happy that you joined us. Hope you're enjoying the evening. We've had some great boxing action already for you, and this main event has turned into, we think, a very interesting matchup as well. And here's a fighter that really nobody knew that's getting a hard time here. Ramirez was an unknown fighter, really. I mean, he only, he, uh, people only know that he fought Luis Cito Espinosa. And now he's giving, he's giving a good fight here, even though he's yes. losing fight. Yes, he is. He just seems to be a step behind Morales, but he's certainly giving a good effort. And if he could land, oh, big right hand. Yeah. There's the boxing skills that Morales is showing. Stepping back, countering, moving, trying to trying to avoid the hits. Yeah, that's great to watch. The, the, the rule in boxing, they tell you to, to box a slugger and slug a boxer. And that's just what Eric Morales is doing. He could stand there and slug, bang, head for head, punch for punch with Ramirez, but he's not. He's maneuvering around, he's scoring big combinations, he's exploding. And like really we talked about tonight, and then he gets out. And then, and this is, to me, this is what boxing is all about. That's hit the other man and not get hit. Intelligence. Absolutely. For that reason, a fighter like him, like Eric Morales, can have a long, productive career. Right. Well, we're halfway through round eight, and Eric Morales continues to show what a multi-dimensional performer he is in this round because he has boxed, he has thrown body punches, he has jabbed, thrown straight right hands. He's done everything in this round. Oh, and he took a right hand in that and case, but managed to walk through it. About a minute left to go here in round eight. And there's still a little bit of danger, a little intriguedness of somebody like Ramirez. Oh, he's got a shot of the right. He's going to go down. Yeah. Oh, he looked like he was going down there. Good body work by Ramirez to set up the head shots. Look at the hands feel. Oh, good lift. How about oh, Ramirez, oh, though? Coming back. Ah. Connor, good Connor. Connor's off the ropes, does Ranchero Ramirez. So a great performance here in round eight by Morales. However, Ranchero Ramirez is going nowhere. And he's going straight forward. Wow. Remains a threat. Juan Carlos Ramirez is making a name for himself uh, tonight. In the all-tough category, not too many guys are ahead of Juan Carlos Ramirez. This is, I don't think I want to be ahead of no. Juan Carlos Ramirez. This is, this, is ex, this is an extraordinary perform, performance by him, even in losing. He's trying as hard as he knows there's, there's a title on the line, and he's fighting to, to his heart. I mean, he, he just That'll kind of everything. That'll for round eight. Wow. And that guy you're looking at, folks, the other gentleman that you saw go back to the corner is a tough opera. So is Eric Morales, for that wow. matter. Ranchero Ramirez, let's go into his corner. They're telling the Morales that you got him right there. They're telling him to breathe in. Are you okay? Yeah. They're telling him okay and he's saying yes. They're telling him, they're, they're telling him that Morales can't do it no more. This has been a back and forth fight. Look at this. Morales scoring. And then back comes Ramirez. How do you how do you face someone like that, you know? I think you just have to give up and try to bomb away and just, you know, use your boxing skills the way Morales is doing. And there's the right hand that hurt Ranchero midway through the round. And amazingly, Morales couldn't get him out. 
Oh, you're going to say, give up and go get a drink. Oh, no. <laughs> you just have to give up and go I, get a drink. I think you have sounds, to finish the fight, sounds though. Sounds a little better. <laughs> we head into the ninth round of what has turned into a very fascinating yeah. championship match. In the last round, Morales landed half his punches, 35 to 70. Ramirez landed only 16, and there we have a clash of heads. I want to see if there's a cut. And it looked like he got a little good on the right cheekbone. Well, Ramirez has been coming in with his head first. You could make yep. a case that they could even take a point away from him at this juncture. You know, the last thing you need is, you know, for Ramirez to to cut Morales with a with a headbutt and lose a fight on a headbutt. Because you know he's doing such a good job by forcing the fight to Morales. Well, Ranchero Ramirez, back in his town of Anapra, is a grocery store owner. Has his own grocery store. And he says if he can win a title and defend it a couple of times, oh. he'll use the money to put sewers in his downtown area. And that's a nice sentiment. Trouble is, trying to win this title against Eric Morales is not so easy. It might be easier to fund those sewer systems. <laughs> With, with taxes. A very amiable person. He's a real nice, right, well-mannered kid. Said his manager told me that uh, he's always been a good boy, never in any kind of trouble, even as a young man growing up. His manager, of course, Felipe de Torre. De Torre. De la Torre. He's known Juan Carlos since he began his boxing career. Now, you know, in this round, Morales has not been as effective in keeping... Ramirez from getting on the inside as he was in the last round. Still doing a pretty good job with that jab on the outside. 22-year-old Eric Morales in his sixth title defense. And he's doing something, Morales is doing something that we rarely see on him. Box. Yeah, that's why I think this is an interesting and extraordinary performance because we haven't seen that from Morales in the past. I didn't even, honestly, I didn't even know he could do this. Oh, he just caught Ramirez had to yeah, right I, up the you know, I, I would have no idea that he could accomplish this and be as skilled at this. Now, Jane Nady's getting real close to taking a point away, and I think he should be, from Ramirez. The last time... Oh, 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 that got for the right hand. There goes Ramirez. And it looked like he's hurt. It doesn't look like he's going to get up. The combination punches. Don't count him out. Oh, this is a tough oh, 22 seconds left to see if Morales can finish him oh, off. Got him again. Morales. And he's going to make it. He's going to make it. He's going to for Morales. Can Ramirez hang on here in round nine? Morales has got to be wondering what is holding him up now. Another gritty performance by Ramirez here in the ninth round as he goes down again and gets up. Jamie, how, how, how does this feel? How does it feel? How does Ranchero feel? <laughs> how do you feel? Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> I mean, I had to translate that one. He answered that one good. Oh, oh that's interesting. Jay Nady stopping the... Oh, wow. They are oh, angry at Jay Nady. And they just threw a, a towel at him. Oh, they... they what was that for? Because they got mad because they stopped the fight. Well, Jane 80 walked in and stopped the fight. I don't know. Let's find out. You oh. see the cornermen very angry of Ranchero Ramirez. The one interesting question will be, did Jane 80 consult with a doctor when he did that, or did he just make that determination on his own? And we'll see if we can find out. That would be one thing it would be great to find out about. It. Well, Jane 80 said and explained to the people in the ringside he just felt he had taken too much punishment. Um, I don't know that he consulted with the doctor beforehand. Um, but you know, he, he was answering back. That's I, I know, you know, I know that's why fighters get hurt and everything. That's right, you got a referee in yeah. there. And it's his opinion that Ramirez has taken too many shots. Right. Well, clearly. He has an argument for that. Right. I, I, haven't, I hadn't given Ramirez the majority of the of the round. Of the round. Well, I right. would disagree. But he was still I would, hanging in there trying. Yeah. yeah. I would say that's why you have a doctor at ringside, yeah, right. who, who in between the but, rounds but becomes the, the boss. But the referee is the one that made the judgment. Well, he made the judgment, and uh, obviously and here we see the down right here. felt it was too There's much. A, a straight right. Yeah, look at these shots. A straight shots. And it looked like he was mostly off balance too, because 
because he really didn't get hit there. There, there we go on the other side. There's a, a straight right right there. That one hurting him, a uh, straight left. But other than that, that was it. Well, there's Ramirez went down, and you see, while he was hurt, he wasn't completely out of it. And I think that's why the corner yeah. was so distressed it got stopped. We'll, we'll have a chance, perhaps, to chat with Jay and find out his reasoning and also whether he had a chance to or did consult with the doctor. In either case, that man, Eric Morales, the 22-year-old from Tijuana, Mexico, who performed beautifully in his sixth title defense, got the job done, and then some. Let's go to Michael Buffer in the center of the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of 10 rounds, referee Jay Nady calls a halt to this bout at the end of the 10th round. The winner by knockout victory and still the reigning and defending WBC Super Bantamweight Champion of the World, Eric El Terrible Morales. Got the job done, defended his title for the sixth time in dramatic fashion. Before we get a chance to talk to Eric, Ramon Sayas is with the loser, Ranchero Ramirez. Ramon? Thank you very much, Al. We have Ranchero Ramirez. ¿Qué pasó en la pelea? What happened? Why did this stop it? Creo que me agarró un buen golpe, no, pero yo estaba bien. No sé por qué la paró el ref. Se manque por esta cortadita que traigo. He says he felt fine. He said that uh, they stopped it uh, before he wanted to be stopped, and it was because of a little cut that he has on his eyebrow. Pensaste que la pararon demasiado pronto, entonces. Stopped it early, huh? Soy un boxeador que de poco más voy muy bien. Creo que yo los últimos rounds los cierro muy fuerte. Y él iba iba decayendo un poco. No sé por qué hizo eso el referee. Pero ni modo, no. Hay que hay que seguir adelante y. Do you still want to fight him again? Lo quieres este, enfrentar una vez más? Sí, o si me queda la revancha, yo acepto ya que me digo, no hay que no sacar pretextos, ¿no? Sino ojalá me diera la revancha y saldré adelante. How frustrating is this for you? ¿Cuán frustrante puede ser esta esta derrota para ti? ¿Cómo? ¿Cuán frustrante te, te ha frustrado esta esta derrota? Has it been frustrating for you? Creo que que las derrotas que tiene uno hay que superarlas, ¿no? Okay, let's go now to champion Eric Morales. We have it right here. Eric Morales. Campeón, ven. Venga, campeón. Ranchero Ramirez said that uh, he feels this, the fight was stopped too early. El ranchero Ramírez dice que siente que la pelea se, se detuvo antes de tiempo. ¿Qué piensas tú? What do you feel? Después de que lo tomé como cinco veces, yo no sé qué, qué espera. Y la única forma de que me golpeó estos golpes que ven fueron a base de cabezazos muy claros, excesivamente claros, muy descarados. Y yo creo que, que la pelea hubiera sido más agradable si fuera a golpes. Obviamente, uh, he was one of the toughest fighters you've seen in the late days. Uh, Sin duda alguna ha sido un hombre muy valiente sobre el cuadrilátero. Were you expecting this? Estabas esperando este, que él fuera tan fuerte en esta pelea. No, fuerte, pero no tan cochino. Lamentablemente, eh, yo pienso que hubiera salido una mejor, una, una pelea más bonita si él se hubiera dedicado, como te digo, a tirar golpes, a querer ganar de verdad con como se gana arriba del ring. No, no, a base de cabezazo, no, mucho menos. Uh, he's saying that, uh, yes, he was very brave. He was always coming towards me, but obviously uh, he was uh, fighting a little bit dirty, uh, bringing in his head all the time, and uh, he he would like to, to, he would have liked to have a better and cleaner fight. Eh, esta pelea, obviamente, eh, para él ha sido muy frustrante, para ti también un poco decepcionante, por lo que veo. It's been a little bit uh, frustrating for you as well, right? Hey, Mira cómo me dejaron, yo creo que, yo pienso que el boxeo, pues sí te lastiman, pero no es tan, tan fea de esta forma, de esta forma tan fea a base de cabezazos, pero, pero espero, espero enfrentarme a rivales de, de clase y espero brindar a la, a la afición. He's saying that uh, it's been a little bit frustrating for him because uh, you can see his face, uh, he's all marked and it's basically because of the headbutts, but uh, he would like to go on to newer things.